Hello. Today I'd like to introduce you to a new web-based coding environment named BlockPy. BlockPy is a free open source project to make it easier for people to learn how to program in Python. BlockPy has a number of powerful features that scaffold learners into more mature environments. In this video, I am going to review a number of the most interesting features of BlockPy. First, we'll look at the dual block text interface. Next, we'll check out BlockPy's Python execution system named Sculpt. Then, we'll take a look at the integrated data science features incorporated in the platform. Finally, we'll see how the platform can be used to assign practice problems to guide students with feedback, especially in popular learning management systems through LTI. When we first visit the public BlockPy website, we can see the main interface. At the top, we are presented with a problem introduction. Directly below that, we see a conventional output console, named the printer, and an area to receive feedback on our program. Then, we have a simple toolbar above the main program canvas. At the bottom, there is the actual editor itself. This editor is where we can write Python programs by dragging blocks. One of the biggest and most obvious features of BlockPy is the dual block text interface. At any time, users can freely switch between blocks, text, or split view. Anything you do on one side immediately updates on the other. Think of the block interface as just another way to write real Python code. BlockPy's block interface is based on the Google Blockly library. Blocks are accessible from the flyout menu on the left. Blocks can be dragged onto the canvas and snapped together, just like in Scratch or Snap. The environment prevents some kind of syntax and type errors. In the text side, the Python code features conventional syntax highlighting and formatting. BlockPy is built on Sculpt, a JavaScript library for executing Python code directly in the browser. This means that BlockPy works entirely locally within a user's browser, with no server required to run the code. Sculpt features a full implementation of the Python language, including many standard libraries. BlockPy was originally created so that students could learn programming in the context of basic data science. Therefore, we've extended Sculpt to include some basic data science functionality. The first major addition are new plotting capabilities. You can make histograms, line plots, and scatter plots quickly and easily. These graphs can be downloaded directly from the browser. The next major addition is a direct connection to the Corgi's dataset project through special data blocks. After a dataset is imported, a new block becomes available that makes it easy to access real world data. These two features make it very easy for novices to get started working with data science questions. The next major feature we'll look at is the guided feedback for practice problems. In this problem, I'm supposed to write a for loop to compute the sum of a list of numbers. As I iterate on my solution, running the code gives me feedback. Here, it suggests that I may have failed to use a for loop. By integrating a for loop into my code, I can calculate the correct answer. Now when I run my code, it suggests that I have computed the length of the list instead of the sum. Once my code is correct and I run, BlockPy will announce that I have completed the problem. In a later video, we'll discuss the instructor interface for designing guided feedback. BlockPy also incorporates a static program analyzer that can optionally enforce basic requirements on the student's code. In this example, my program no longer prints the property named total. When I click run, an algorithm error is shown indicating that a variable was created but never used. 
The analyzer correctly handles simple loops and branches. Although unsuitable for large-scale programs, these simple constraints can prevent students from making mistakes in basic pro problems. BlockPy can be embedded in learning management systems, such as Canvas, through LTI, so that student grades can be collected and reported back. When a student completes a BlockPy program, the server submits their grade and code back to Canvas. This way, an instructor can monitor their student's performance. These are just some of the features in BlockPy. If you're interested in trying it out yourself, please check out www.blockpy.com. BlockPy is both free and open source. I hope you find it useful, and thanks for watching.